Good afternoon everyone. So I thought I'd do a video today about language stacking. Um, language stacking, language laddering, as far as I'm aware they are the same thing or very very similar if they're not exactly the same. When I've had a look online they Certain people use different terms, but they do seem to be very, very similar. So yeah, I thought I'd talk about language stacking slash language laddering today. So the first time I kind of came about this term was when I saw a video by Lindy Boats. I think that's her name. Yeah, Lindy Boats. Um, she did a video about this. If I can find it, I will link it down below. Um, and it was something that I'd never heard of before, never thought about doing. But it just seemed like such a good idea for someone that was trying to learn multiple languages at the same time or wanted to start learning like their third language. So so what language stacking is, is basically using your second language, so the one that you have been learning, and using that language to learn your third, fourth, fifth, whatever language, whatever language is next. Um, so the whole point is that you're stacking one language on top of the other. So, so for example, what you would do is you will get to like an intermediate or a high level in your second language and then use resources or materials in that language to then learn the next one so then you're continually learning your second language as well. Um, I mean there are certain languages that this works best in. I, I find it best for when I am learning Italian and Spanish so I've been learning Spanish a lot longer than I have been learning Italian so I find that that's probably the best for me to do is to use Spanish like textbooks for Italian um, because they are kind of similar languages. Other common languages that people use for this is like Korean and Japanese um, because they use fairly similar like basic word order and they both use particles so you'll find that quite a few people that learn both Korean and Japanese will use textbooks in each language to learn the second one of the two that they're learning. So yeah, I feel they're the two main ones that I've heard that it works best for, so like Korean, Japanese, Italian and Spanish, but they don't necessarily have to be related languages or like similar in any way, it just, some ways it works better that way. So the ones that people seem to recommend doing it for. So some of the pros for using language checking or laddering is that it makes you sort of spend more time learning the second language so by using a textbook in your second language it forces you to practice more potentially learn words that you may have never come across before um, as well as keeping the language fresh in your mind as well so another pro is that it also gives you the opportunity to load more different textbooks that you may never come across in your specific native language um, just difference in resources that you may never have come across loads of different books to use or podcasts or whatever it is that you prefer to use i said like before it also helps you find like gaps potentially in your second language so um there might be like words that you've never come across before in the second language so it might help you learn new things that you didn't know before in both of the languages that you're trying to learn this is like another pro but potentially like a con depending on how you look at it is that you have to pay more attention to detail specifically if the languages that you're using so the two languages you're using are similar you may have to pay more attention to things like accents and spellings because the words are fairly similar so that might be a pro or a con depending on how you look there is some people that don't like the laddering or stacking technique just because they don't like learning multiple languages at the same time which i can understand because it's very easy to sort of get words mixed up between multiple languages if you're learning two or three at the same time um, I prefer to do it this way just because I like to learn multiple languages at the same time or I I like to learn multiple things so I don't want to just stick to one language. Um, I've always kind of preferred learning multiple languages even before I found this specific technique. Even though it's fun and great to like learn multiple languages it's probably best to wait until you're at least an intermediate level before you start trying to learn your third or fourth or whichever language it is. Just because if you do it at beginner level it's probably going to be too confusing so if you're going to use this technique it might be best to wait until your intermediate or advanced level before you start trying this. How to use the like stacking or laddering technique is you need to determine how the languages are related so it's important to know if they're similar to each other if they're in the same language family things like that before you get started just to know if there's any sort of similarities or differences between them um, because if they are very similar, like I said before, it is easy to sort of slip up on like 
accents or spellings if they use very similar words. However, using two languages in the same language families can be sort of an easier step than using two completely different languages from two different language families. You've done that you need to sort of decide what order you want to learn them in so how you want to stack or ladder your languages so obviously you've got your, like you need to sort of figure out how your target languages are related to each other and how you are going to stack them so what you're going to learn first and then second and so forth um, if you're planning on learning that many or just like one or two so this could be done on how they are similar so potential language families first or if you need to learn a certain language quicker than any others so if you're doing one for a specific reason and then others for fun obviously you're going to start that one first after that you then need to decide on a point in which you're going to feel comfortable to then stack the next one on top if that's what you want to do so you need to sort of figure out how far into it you need to get so do you want to be just know the basics do you want to be intermediate or do you want to know like lots of stuff before you start stacking on the next language so you need to figure out how far into a course or whatnot you'll be in before you start the next language so then the main things you need to know before you start language stacking or laddering let me know your thoughts do you language stack or ladder and if so what order do you do them in do you have any sort of language families that you found easier to do um let me know what you think thank you for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one bye